This is Deva, your financial literacy plug, and today we'll be examining whether there's a need to own or rent office space, especially as a startup. It is not something I favor, but there are pros and cons, and it's left for you to decide what works for you. Firstly, let's look at the pros, that's the benefits, the advantages that come with having an office as a startup. Offices are fantastic if you'll be working as a team. If the nature of your work is such that you must work as a team, then it's important to have office space. Now the thing is, of course, you have to rent that space or buy it, but if you'll be working in a group of four or five people, there might even be a need for the separate individuals to have, you know, different spaces, workstations, so that they'll be able to work effectively and maximize their time. It might not go too well if, as a team, you're struggling to communicate with each other remotely. I know remote communication because it became a thing after 2020. But subconsciously, there are people who still work more effectively. We're already used to coming together to work. So doing stuff remotely doesn't always give the desired result. So there might be a need to get that little cubicle that you can partition and give everybody their workstation and so on and so forth. So it depends on the nature of the work you are doing. If you're working as a team, you definitely need to get office space. So that's point number one. Work-life balance. You see, as good as work from home sounds, the truth is you cannot divorce it completely from the domestic environment. We've seen a number of funny videos where, especially on the news, somebody is trying to anchor a piece and the child comes running in, there's loud screaming in the background, there are dogs barking somewhere and so on and so forth. It's not everybody that can disengage themselves from the domestic space and focus on the work they're doing. It becomes disruptive. It becomes extremely disruptive. So, and then again, you find things being jumbled up. Time that you would ordinarily have spent with your family will now be shared between family and work. Whereas there are people who, when they have a separate office space, when they go there, they finish everything that they need to do with regard to work before coming home. So that when they get home, they can commit their time to their family, to the spouse, to the children, to any domestic affairs that may arise. So that's point number two, why it might be necessary to have an office that is separate from your household. Point number three. When you have office space, there are fewer distractions. Because usually, an office environment is located in a place where there are like-minded organizations around. So, you are not likely going to open your office you will not likely open your office inside of a market, for instance, our conventional markets here. So th this is talking about offices now. We know that is a very formal arrangement. Now, if it is a shop, it still serves to reduce distractions because when you leave the domestic environment and go to your shop, say maybe you sell textile or clothing, shoes, makeup, whatever, hair, when you leave that domestic environment and go to the shop, in a way, psychologically, you achieve a kind of mind balance. You divorce yourself from the domestic environment and your mindset shifts to something else. And you know that, okay, in this environment, this is what I'm here to do and so on and so forth. And your mind is more attuned to working. So these are the three main advantages of having an office. You are able to separate your work 
from your life situation, you are able to focus more intensely on the work itself and then you experience fewer distractions. Now let's look at the cons. I started out by talking about if you are starting out, if you are just beginning, especially if this is your first time in business, I would strongly advise that you start from home. Start small. Don't throw everything you have into setting it up. Do not rent a shop. Don't start with heavy overheads. So you are just beginning. Let's say for instance that um, you're selling natural hair. You know, you import it from wherever it is you import it from. And then it comes in, you go get it, you sort it and everything. Now, let's look at the Abuja situation for instance. Let's say a standard shop within Amak, in a good neighborhood, in a decent shopping complex. Let's say the topmost floor, the fourth floor, would be something in the region of half a million. That's 500,000 Naira. You're going to put shelves inside that shop. You're going to put at least a desk and a chair. Probably one or two seats or benches for customers to sit down. You don't want them standing the whole time they're in your shop. You are going to start paying for utilities. That would be things like electricity, water. You are going to pay the owners of the complex money, maintenance, some kind of maintenance fee, probably for security, for cleaning general spaces. You are going to start paying taxes and so on and so forth. You know, those signboards that people put outside their business, uh, that, that thing is known as signage and it is paid for. So, you are 500,000 that would have gone into buying you, like maybe, who knows, another 20 pieces of very good human hair has now gone into rent. Then another 100,000 has probably gone into service charge that covers maintenance, security, cleaning and all of this. That's then there's another 300,000 that you used to build the shelves. There's another uh, 200,000 that you've used to buy the desk and the chair. I don't know if you're getting how all of those small, small monies could have gone into the actual business itself. But you put yourself in a position now where you have so many overheads that if you're not careful, because you're just starting out, people have a tendency to go to already established places of business. There has to be something really outstanding for you to become competition to those who are already there. So if you're not very careful, in your first year, you might not make enough to even be able to renew your rent the next year. I know people who have been in business for five years and they're still doing it from home successfully. They have removed all the overheads and so they're maximizing profits. So that is one reason why for me, I strongly object to startups renting space buying shops in fact buying might even be better because if at any point in time your business collapses you can rent it to somebody else and still get something back but when you are just starting out you will make a lot of mistakes so spare yourself the agony of bringing plenty of overhead costs along with you so that you give yourself the best possible opportunity to survive into your second year at least so that's Point number one. Of course, if you're not renting a space, we're assuming that you've carved out a small space in your house where you're doing your business from, so you're working from home. Now, point number two. When you rent space, you also have the cost of commuting back and forth, which takes up time and money. So, let's say, for instance, you are based in... Garki. But because the, the shop rents in Garki are really high, you chose to go get a shop in Nyanya 
where they're probably cheaper and you have a high population population density there is very high so the chances of getting in your customers is also very good now we all know what traffic is like along that route so if you on the days that you are unlucky you might find yourself yes you're going against traffic but you might find yourself in a position where there's been an accident or something and you wind up spending two to three hours in transit just to get to your shop same thing might happen coming back that's time that's money that you could have saved up if you had your business working from home then point number three do you know that even in your office or in your shop distractions can still exist depending on the kind of business you are doing where it is located the kind of people you're partnering with and so on and so forth whereas in your home you do have a certain degree of control over the environment if you are able to manage yourself for instance let's assume that um, you're the head of the household you're the man of the house you can tell your wife listen from this time to this time i'm going to be really busy i have one or two online meetings and so on and so forth i would appreciate it if we keep the noise down nobody knock on the door and so on and so forth these are virtual meetings i don't want to be distracted your wife will find a way to make it happen or whoever it is else that is in the house but when you are working in an environment that is completely out of your control and nowadays we have this thing where you go to a public place and we call ourselves a secular country right nigeria is supposed to be a secular country and somebody is literally using a pa system to scream prayers right in front of your shop there's literally nothing you can do about that there have been instances where people came out and challenged such situations and found themselves attacked by a mob. So while that is the worst possible case scenario, it's just to give you, it's to get you thinking. Because with regard to distractions, you actually have far better control of your home environment than you do of the environment outside so it all depends on you so you have started your small business or maybe you're on the verge of starting these are some of the things you should be considering do you have so much money that you want to start the small business with overheads such as rent electricity bills water bills maintenance fees furniture security and so on and so forth or is it a business that you can conveniently carve space out for in your house? At least till when you're absolutely certain that the business is thriving, that it is bringing in a good profit, and that it has the potential to withstand the next two to three years. Because studies have shown that in Nigeria particularly, most small businesses collapse within the first five years most small businesses collapse within the first five years and a quick look through of small businesses will make you understand that some of the reasons why these things happen is because many people who go into business come in unprepared uh, they don't have a mentor they do not do enough research they have not been in any kind of business environment they have not understudied anybody and they are coming into it very naive Sometimes these could be people who have been civil servants and or public servants, so to speak, and have lost their jobs and want to start something quickly on the side. Sometimes it's somebody who has just finished school and doesn't want to just be sitting at, at home. Somebody has offered to give them money to start something and they immediately think, ah, I need to go and rent a shop. I need to go and rent office space. Then they fall into the trap of great overhead costs that will put them in a position where the business does not thrive and then they find themselves going cap in hand to whoever their benefactors were to ask for money again for things like rent to put back into the business and so on and so forth. So these are just some things I would like you to mull over before you put money 
into renting office space or a shop. Now, if you have found this content useful, I'd like you to comment, share. Of course, you have to subscribe, like, and then come back again next Thursday for more of such content. Thank you for watching. Thank you.